everyone, we're here at Watches and Wonders uh, with Mr. Carl Frederick Schuffle, uh, the CEO at uh, Ferdinand Berto. Um, welcome to the Hour Markers to begin with. And uh, I want to dive right into the brand Ferdinand Berto, uh, the history of the brand, and what drove you to bring it back. Well, um... First of all, I don't think we should talk about a brand. I, I don't like the idea of a brand in connection with Ferdinand Berthaud. Ferdinand Berthaud, um, above all, was a great watchmaker in the 18th century. Uh, he was uh, known for his uh, ship chrono chronometers, and he uh, was probably the uh, most important also watchmaker who passed on his knowledge to um, other watchmakers and pupils. Um, so in the 18th century, it was all about precision because you would rely on this precision to navigate on the sea. Uh, so Berthoud was born not far away from Fleurier where we have our manufacture. He then moved to Paris. Paris, uh, he became watchmaker for the French Navy and for the king, well, actually for two kings of France and, and Napoleon uh, subsequently. Um, I came across the name Bertou because of our museum. We have a museum uh, featuring uh, timekeeping devices since the 15th century. And in that connection, we have a section which deals with chronometers. And when you think of chronometers, you think Berthaud. Uh, I bought, a, I was lucky enough to uh, purchase this Berthaud piece. Uh, and then I got really interested in the man's history. Um, subsequently, I understood that he was born very close to Fleurier, and uh, it didn't last, it didn't take long. I, I tried to find out who owned the name Berthou. I managed to secure the name Berthou, uh, we bought it. And um, then came a period of reflection, how should we re sort of relaunch, or how should we interpret what Berthou did in the 18th century on the wrist of someone today. Because obviously we wanted to make a wrist watch, not a pocket watch. So uh, it took us from about 2009 until 2015, until we uh, launched the FB1, the first Bertou wrist watch. And um, the idea behind this watch was we would take a ship chronometer and fi figure out how we can miniaturize this to wear on the wrist. Um, easily said, but not easily done, um, certainly. Um, but we, we managed to create a, a timepiece which is uh, respectful of history and tradition, but also very contemporary. Um, contemporary also because of the case, the shape, uh, uh, octagon, octagonal shape. Um, the year after we presented the watch, it won the prize, the grand prize at the Geneva Grand Prix. And subsequently now we won three more prizes, which is quite unbelievable. Um, but I think it goes to show that our idea and our uh, philosophy was, is the right one. So in the meantime, we, we presented a number of interesting uh, timepieces, every time featuring uh, an inspiration coming from uh, Berthoud's also designs, that, uh, of which we have many, because Berthoud wrote a lot of books. Um, or some of the museum pieces that we would have or that would 
would be in other museums because actually there are a number of important museums who, uh, which feature Bertou timepieces as well. So uh, here obviously the first thing you are tempted to do is turn the watch around to see the beauty of the movement. But basically the setup uh, with fusée chain is what really uh, immediately uh, strikes you. And then uh, in this case, the, the beautiful balance wheel and the tourbillon. Um, so this is an interpretation, if you wish, of the very first movement, which uh, after a last series of 38 will come to an end. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we created uh, what we call a smaller size Bertou, uh, the FB3. And again, uh, we were searching for uh, the perfect expression of the Bertou style, which I believe uh, uh, we managed. And again, Technically, it is a very sophisticated and very, very well finished uh, piece. And since our humble be beginnings, I would say um, up to today, we earned a great recognition to the point that now we, we unfortunately have quite a waiting list. <laughs> but uh, this was not always so. and. Uh, you know, we, we exhibited here uh, first time, I think, was 2018. Um, and between 2018 in, in the Carré here in the Zoologie and today, the world of difference is that um, everybody knocks at our door and, and wants, to st wants to represent Bertou or wants to, to see the Bertou piece. And in the very beginning, it was us who you know, try to show and but I think and that's why I said it's not a brand. Uh, it's an uh, homage to Bertou, to a watchmaker who is an outstanding personality and uh, and that's what we want to keep up. I would uh presume that given the craftsmanship that goes into each time phase, they're not limited editions, but they're limited production. There are both. I mean, we, for example, as I mentioned here, we'll be making another 38 movements of, of this kind. Um, and then it will be discontinued because we cannot, on a parallel basis, produce uh, too many different uh, movements and also we are limited in terms of production as you just said yes we are quite limited because the, just to finish the components is a, a is an incredible job which uh, uh, has to be learned for for months for years and you can't we cannot just say, okay, we will double the production. It's, it's, it's simply impossible. It's always difficult to bring back uh, the essence of the watchmaker. Was that really a battle for you as well? Yes, well, you know, we have, the, we have, and we still have the responsibility, I believe, that, you know, here is an outstanding uh, historic uh, personality, a watchmaker in that case. Um, how do we pay justice to to him and his uh, his work? And uh, and I think we I think we did quite well. Okay, great. Could you tell us something special about uh, the spring over here? This what uh, Ferdinand Berthu is also quite known for. Well, Ferdinand Berthu was very well known for all his research around uh, hair springs or. Uh, chronometry devices, balance wheels, and you name it. And, um, and here you have a cylindrical hairspring, which you can very nicely observe through the porthole uh, here on the side. And the porthole itself, again, 
reminds us of the uh, ship chronometers where you would always have a window where you can check if the movement was working all right because in those days it, uh, you know life and death depended on on the ship chronometer so um, the way this hairspring uh, works is, is just unbelievable you can spend hours just watching yes very clean dialogue, so it kind of focuses on the hairspring. Yes, well, basically, that's also a Bertou feature. Uh, it's always like uh, less is more, and uh, the technical aspect is always the most important one. Um, and he, he probably would have said, keep it simple, but underneath, it's very complicated. <laughs> yes. Watches and wonder, Mr. Shukla, how has the experience been so far? We're on day four today. Uh, what are your thoughts on the show? I think this has been a great addition so far. Uh, we have seen, uh, you know, partners from all, all over the world finally again, and, uh, for, and for the first time in some cases since three, four years. So uh, yes, it's it's been uh, it's been really. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> well, you're here to you here and obviously representing a brand, if I may say so, Chopard mm -hmm. and the watchmaker Ferdinand Bertrand. Yes. How are the two very different from each other? Well, they're totally different from each other when it comes to, of course, the uh, uh, the volume and size in terms of production, and uh, um, but certainly when it comes to uh, the, the approach um, product-wise and the attention to detail and everything that is dear to us, I don't think there is much difference because uh, whether it's it's a Chopin timepiece or a Bertou watch, um, we work with the same passion, the same attention to detail and uh, I don't think, that we, I certainly don't make any difference there. But then, of course, the scope and the size and the... But uh, um, both are... Uh, I'm very passionate, passionate about both. Great. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Schiffer. Welcome.